Hello from Portland, Oregon. My name is Pete Gerlach. I am a veteran psychotherapist. Uh, I have specialized in communications and step families. And for the last 22 years, I've specialized in working with people who are trying to recover from early childhood trauma. I want to focus in this video, one of a series, on a common mental health condition, which I think, as a professional, is often misunderstood and misdiagnosed. The condition is called Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, abbreviated for convenience as OCD. Do you know anybody that has been diagnosed with OCD? Or perhaps have you? Uh, then this video will apply to you. Uh, can you define an obsession if, say, a 14-year-old person looked at you and said, what, what is this obsess? What is obsession? What is that? Would you know how to answer? Uh, my answer is, briefly, an obsession is a condition where you mentally focus on something in excess and it crowds out a normal balanced perception of life. Um, you can ob obsess about a person, about a place, about an idea, about a dream, about a hope, about an experience. Um, some people obsess about orderliness and perfectionism. Uh, that can translate into action, but for the moment, an obsession is, you might summarize and say, obsession is having unwanted thoughts. This can occur to all of us occasionally. The problem uh, that merits mental health attention is when chronic obsession happens all the time and it interferes with balanced life. Okay? So that's an obsession. Now assume your inquisitive 14-year-old says, well, and what is a compulsion? A com what is a compulsion? What, is a com what do you mean compulse? What is compulsion? How would you know to answer that? Compulsions and obsessions are similar. The difference is a compulsion is an, uh, an obsessive action. It's a compulsive action that you cannot control, have great difficulty controlling with willpower. A classic example is uh, excessive hand washing. Another can be a ritual, many different kinds of rituals, lots of which are um, mild or harmless. For instance, every time you pass through a doorway, touching the left-hand side of the doorframe. Any harm to that? No. Can you avoid it? Yes. But notice, if you try to uh, prevent that kind of action, um, checking for your car keys four times in a row, even though you found them the first time, <clears throat> that can cause you anxiety, and it can cause people around you to question you. Uh, are you okay? Uh, why are you doing that? So a compulsion, sorry, uh, a compulsion is an action that you have difficulty controlling. Sometimes the action really has no relevance to what you're practically doing. So obsessions and or compulsions uh, are common among all of us. Uh, and the reason I'm making this video is some people find that their obsessions and or compulsions are so chronic and so extreme that it really causes them disruption in their lives. When people go to mental health professionals to see if they can reduce obsessions and or compulsions, the classic treatment these days is one or both of two things. Typical mental health people, therapists, psychiatrists, psychologists, um, clinical social workers will often say, you need therapy, you need relaxation therapy and focusing therapy and breathing exercises and perhaps yoga 
and various treatments like that. And doctors, psychiatrists, may say you really need anti-anxiety medication and or anti-depression medication. Those can be expensive and they can be habit forming for some people. Um, most people would like to do without depending on medications for a serene life. But that's the classic treatment for people who are diagnosed as having the condition of OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, psychotherapy, and perhaps drugs. I want to offer a different opinion about this condition. Notice they do not call it a mental illness. In my opinion, it is not an illness. It is a condition. There's a big difference. Would you rather say I have a condition or I'm sick? Um, I want to propose that OCD, like many other um, mood, so-called mood disorders or personality disorders, OCD is not the problem. It is a symptom of the core problem. The core problem which causes OCD and other similar maladies. The core problem is that uh, people with this condition have sustained significant trauma in their early childhood. What I mean by trauma is some combination of ab abandonment by their adults, neglect, and abuse. It could be one traumatic time, it could be a series of events, each of which by themselves were not particularly notable, but over time they mounted up to severe psychological trauma. What such trauma does, in my professional opinion, is cause up to six psychological wounds. Excessive shame, excessive guilt, excessive fears, excessive reality distortions, difficulty trusting, and if you put all those together, um, you may have trouble empathizing, feeling your emotions, including love, uh, and bonding with other human beings. These are serious psychological conditions. They come from early childhood trauma. The purpose of my video here is to propose, after 33 years of study, OCD, uh, like several other very common psychological diagnoses, uh, like bipolar disorder or borderline personality disorder. These are all the same in that they are symptoms of these psychological wounds. If this is true, notice the implication. Getting psychotherapy to reduce the symptoms will not, underline not, heal the underlying wounds. Using medication for OCD and related symptoms will not cure the underlying psychological wounds. You then might ask, especially if you've been diagnosed with OCD or someone you care about has that diagnosis, well you might say, well, okay, so what do we do uh, to treat the underlying wounds? Let me make some specific brief suggestions this is not the whole answer, but it will guide you towards the whole answer. The first step, if you have been diagnosed with OCD or uh, bipolar disorder or borderline or anxiety disorder or antisocial personality disorder, anything like that, find out if you are what I call a grown wounded child. That's a survivor of early childhood trauma. Here is an article on my free self-improvement website that will give you a good amount of background information on what is a grown wounded child. Um, there are several related articles that this one leads to, but here's the link to this article. Secondly, once you read what is a grown wounded child, the next step is to find out, well, am I a, a GWC, a grown wounded child? Here is a link to two different worksheets on my website, 
each of which comes from several decades of clinical experience. The worksheets will give you at least strong clues, not proof, but strong clues whether or not you have sustained and inherited, by the way, that's where these wounds come from. They get passed right down the generations until someone stops them. So here are the links to two different worksheets on my website. They're free. There are no ads. There's no catches. You don't have to buy anything. Try out these worksheets when you're undistracted and with an open mind. See where they lead you. If you feel you are significantly psychologically wounded, what can you do? Um, lesson one in my nonprofit website, one of seven lessons, the very first lesson, is all about psychological wounding, assessing for the wounding, and it prevents uh, a proven framework for how to reduce these wounds. If you choose to do that, and here is a link to this lesson one in my website. Uh, there's a lot of information in, in it. It's divided into four chunks, four modules. It's just like a college course. If you feel you have psychological wounds, I urge you for your own sake and for the sake of any children that you may now care for or do so in the future, study lesson one that will show you a specific effective way to identify and reduce not only your psychological wounds, but as you do that, the symptoms of OCD and other so-called disorders will shrink. Okay. In summary, this video is one of a series of videos, um, all of which are aimed at trying to pass on what I've learned in 33 years as a family systems therapist. There is a great deal of misunder misunderstanding and misdiagnoses of uh, mental health conditions, in this case, obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD. What I have tried to do here today is give you an alternate view of OCD and give you a, a successful pathway towards better understanding these symptoms and the core problems that cause the symptoms. Most importantly, how to reduce the core causes and the symptoms. As always, if you have any comments, feedbacks, criticisms, praise about this video, related videos, any of my videos, or my YouTube channel, or my nonprofit website, I'd be real glad to receive your comments, and I'll do my best to reply if I can. Uh, thanks very much for your attention. I hope you find this useful.